Can you believe the vote is still open? You know, we made history today. This is the longest vote held open in the history of Congress. Just because they don't have the votes for their bill today. We're moments away from voting on a 2,145-page bill. Advanced in the dead of night, finalized, I think finalized, a few hours ago. And not one person in this body has read it. Only 10% of Americans say they know what is in this bill, according to a CBS poll. But I bet that percentage is even smaller on the Democratic conference. The Congressional Budget Office has not shown the American people exactly how much this bill will cost, as required by the Congressional Budget Act and the rules of our House. And the CBO reports that, that they will only arrive as American families get an enormous receipt from their Thanksgiving dinner. There will not be a CBO score until Thanksgiving. One clue we have of the price tag, however, comes from Wharton School. Their budget model, it states that the true cost of the Democrats' bill is $4 trillion. That's twice as high as Democrats have advertised, or even four times, because the president says it costs nothing. Are members of Congress even aware of this estimate? While Democrats' reconciliation plan has no transparency, Tuesday's results show an important truth. Voters from Virginia to Texas to Seattle to Minneapolis to New Jersey sent a mandate to their elected officials. Stop catering to the progressive left and work on solutions that will improve the lives of your constituents. Even the New York Times editorial board agrees. Elements of the reconciliation plan are part of a sharp leftward push in the party. The New York Times agrees. you got thousands to millions of voters who just gave you a very clear message and where are the Democrats today? Breaking their own rules, setting new records of just keeping votes open, and trying to intimidate and bully members to vote for something. Why? So Speaker Pelosi can get on her jet and go to Europe for the third time in three months? They really should be working on fixing our supply chain crisis but the Democratic policies will create even more disruptions by shipping more of our businesses overseas. It appears congressional Democrats want to do everything possible to continue to make things worse. The vote today is rushed and irresponsible. It just continues to raise the question of a speaker. Is she more concerned of just being a lame duck getting on her farewell tour, or working for the American public. You know, it's been said many times that shame me once, shame on you. Shame me twice, shame on me. In 2009, the Democrats got this exact same message from Virginia and New Jersey voters. And four days later, Nancy Pelosi did the exact same thing. Rushed to vote on Obamacare and 63 Democrats lost their seat just a year from then. I would think people would learn from that. You have rules of the House that you have to know what a bill will do and what it will cost. You have members on the Democratic side who said they would never vote for it unless they were able to read it. You have a leadership that's pushing and trying to intimidate. You have an American public that is pushing back, saying focus on the challenges, the rising cost, Inflation was created mainly by Democrats push earlier this year on their trillions of dollars of spending when we warned them not to. A border that is open, rising gasoline prices and looking to OPEC to solve the problem instead of allowing American jobs and American workers to solve it. And all today, they want to rush through a bill that will cost $4 trillion dollars and bring more harm and damage to the problems they've already created. With that, let's open it up for questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, two quick questions. The first, kind of short term, this motion to adjourn, uh, will you be bringing that to the floor? And then long term, if this bill does pass the House, the Senate, and if you do take back control, will you try to repeal any parts of it? 
Well, we, we, we would try to repeal anything that's damaging to the American public. Anything that would incentivize American manufacturing go to another country. Anything that would harm the workers of America that would make them lose their job. Anything that would harm the supply chain that would allow China to become stronger and America to become weaker. Um, there's so many problems within this bill. I do not believe, even if it passed the House today, that it could pass the Senate. So we'll have to wait and see. Yes. For Catholics and other believers out there, the Hyde Amendment still does not remain in the bill. Your reaction to that? You know, for 50 years, Republicans and Democrats agreed that that was the law of the land. Regardless of how you felt about abortion, you shouldn't spend taxpayers' money, hardworking taxpayer money, on funding an abortion. What a tremendous shift that this Democratic Party has become. More of a socialist wing it shows in their policies, and that's exactly one. Uh, I would be shocked if the number of Democrats who have always defended the Hyde Amendment, even the president himself, now to change their position really makes you wonder. Yes, ma'am. I'm not asking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but will it be difficult for Republicans to campaign next year and for messaging against free uh, preschool, uh, child care assistance, elder care? Is it going to be more difficult for Republicans after this bill passes? Well, I never imagined anything's free. It has to be paid for. And what's interesting to me in the Democrats' plan for child care, they're saying the child care worker has to have a college degree. They're going to create just like they did in the supply chain problem. You're going to have fewer child care opportunities out there. It was interesting when they asked uh, Congressman Cartwright about this yesterday on television. He said, oh, I didn't read that part of the bill. It goes to the fundamental question here. Why would they push something through without even having a score on their own rules? I don't think it'll be hard for Republicans to campaign against this bill at all. The damage that is done, we warned them earlier when they took the majority not to take the path they were doing, and lo and behold, what's happened a year later. We have inflation like we haven't seen in years. We have a border that is no longer secure, where people on the terrorist watch list are being caught coming across this border. We've got prices of gasoline that haven't been this high since the last time Biden was in office. And his only answer is he can't, he can't solve it quickly, but he looks to OPEC. He shuts down American pipelines but allow Putin to have his own pipeline, which now he's playing politics with and bringing his armies to the border of Ukraine. Would he ever do that if he questioned the strength of America? You have China now questioning where they're openly talking about in the reports I read yesterday in the paper of maybe taking an island or two that Taiwan controls. You have America in doubt in this process, all because of the policies of the Democrats taking the majority. You've just had an election this week. It wasn't just about Virginia, New Jersey, Minneapolis, Seattle, Texas a seat that Biden won by 13 points that's 73 percent Hispanic and a Republican just carried, it is no doubt Republicans will have no problem campaigning, but they won't be campaigning alone. Independents and Democrats will join with them in changing the direction of this nation, just like they did last Tuesday. Yes? Just curious, how many House Republicans will be able to campaign on the fact that they voted for the bipartisan I think it'd be very difficult for a Republican to campaign on that because it's viewed as one bill. It's what the Democrats are doing. If they bring it up today, they bring it up as one bill. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, Mr. Leader. Um, you talked about lessons learned from the, the most recent races. Um, would you counsel some of your uh, fellow Republicans in, in tough races to follow the Youngkin model of trying to keep the former president at a distance and maybe swing districts? And would you also counsel the former president I don't see how the president distanced himself. He, he um, endorsed Youngkin in the primary. He uh, did a telephone town hall for him to get the vote out, and we found that the vote got out big. You know, Democrat turnout was pretty close to the same. The Republican turnout is what was larger. I, I, give, all, I give a lot of credit to the campaign Youngkin ran. You know what he ran on? Policies. In the closing days, you know what he talked about? Making the DMV work. He talked about parents having a say in their kids' education. It was a great contrast to what the Democrats are doing. So it was a party more united and adding more people to it. 
In the last election, Speaker Pelosi bragged that they would win 15 seats. The pollsters said the Democrats would win 15 seats in the House. They got the number right, the party wrong. For the first time since 1994, not one Republican incumbent lost. And we beat the Democrats, and every single Democrat lost to a Republican woman or a Republican minority. We did that with President Trump on the ticket and with the help of President Trump. Just as new governor Glenn Youngkin will fight and help Republicans win the majority, so will President Trump. And I think at the same time, you're going to find the party expand. This is about addition, not subtraction. And what's driving more people to these policies is they're seeing the failed policies of what the Democrats have provided us. Every American is going to find out in a very short time period that their Thanksgiving is going to be the most experienced, most expensive they've ever witnessed. Every week they find out when they go to the gas station how much more it costs because of these policies. And I think it's an e going to be an easy campaign for Republicans to bring more people to the party. Leader, yes, ma'am. What do you make of the idea in the current for Democratic draft of abolishing the party line No. I, wh why would you ever do Im an immigration bill in reconciliation when you know the Senate parliamentarian told you it's not? Because you're trying to buy off votes. I'm one who believes the immigration system in America is broken. So why don't we have an immigration bill based just upon immigration reform? And why wouldn't we first accord? Oh, I've talked about that before. That's if somebody has come here under the age of 18 and has come here illegally about working towards a path towards legal status, not to citizenship. But you would never do legislation like that inside reconciliation. What's happening is throughout the night, Speaker Pelosi is trying to buy off three or four votes. What's it today? What's it the next day? And poor Josh, that guy's been promised so much. I mean, I feel sorry for the guy. I mean, I don't know how many signed on the letter that he would never vote for a reconciliation bill until the BIF was passed. Well, he voted for a reconciliation bill to start. He deemed it, not even to debate it. She won bigger. And then every time she pulls that football out from under him, we're going to vote on it this week. I don't know how many bottles of champagne we have sent him, but I, I feel bad for that poor guy. But if she can do that time and again with groups of three and four to promise you something and then you vote for it. But what she's doing to the American public right now is she's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. The rules of the House is the Congressional Budget Office has to tell you how much it costs. This is going to be the largest bill in the history of America, largest tax increase, largest funding. And she wants to ram it through simply because she wants to go to her third trip to Europe in three months for her farewell tour. I don't know how many more countries she can hit. And not allow the American public to even know what's in this bill, let known those who vote for it. Why does she think she can do it? Because she did it the last time they lost the majority. Yes, sir. Mr. Leader, you talked about uh, high inflation, high gas prices, and I did fill my tank up this morning, and gas was a little bit higher, but I want to ask a little bit higher? A little bit higher than what? Last higher week? Than last year. Okay. Yeah. Higher than last year. How much did you spend? It was three forty six, I believe. Come to come to California, you know what you spend out there? You're almost five bucks a gallon. Um, my question is, uh, what did you make of this morning's um, unemployment numbers, the job numbers? More than half a million jobs created in the month of October. Is that a good sign for the Biden? That's job? great that's great for America. Well, to the Bidens, I don't know. They've been utilizing their poor job numbers to say why they need Build Back Better. So if this was the case today, why would you need the bill? Yes, ma'am. Um, can we stand and leave? I know that's something Ivanka Trump has advocated for, some Republicans have been supportive of. If it does get stripped out of the Build Back Better framework, is that something that Republicans would be willing to negotiate as a standalone? Look, um, I, I think the very first thing that has to happen is reconciliation has to fail. What Republicans want to be able to do is make sure 
people can have daycare and uh, have it in a manner that it works well. Um, you look at the child tax credit, Republicans did uh, put it within their bill. But one thing that the Democrats do fundamentally different, and this is what's has harmed a lot, just like when they would take unemployment that Republicans support, but then they would add another $15 an hour beyond what your state did to encourage people to stay home, not go back to work. In their plan, they take away the work requirement. In their plan, they expand it where 90% of all Americans actually can attain it. So you can get a check every single day. And in their latest plan, if I'm correct, they don't require any Social Security number. So what they're doing is American hard-earned working taxpayer money would pay for people who are non-Americans as well. So it would create many problems and incentivize many problems throughout. And I think it would be a long way before it negotiate. Yes, sir? Sir, uh, you talked about how what's going on raises questions about Speaker Pelosi. What does it say about President Biden's agenda? What do you mean? I don't understand well, your question. You, you've been saying that what, whatever is going on at the moment uh, reflects on Speaker Pelosi and... President no, it reflects on all the Democrats. What does it say about President Biden's agenda here with, with this bill that... No, it's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a failed policy. L let's walk through... I, I appreciate the question. So let's walk through what does it say about President Biden's Policies? Okay. Well, let's first look at his foreign policy in Afghanistan. He lied to the Americans who were there that they could come down. He wouldn't re return the phone calls to our foreign allies who were, had their own troops and citizens there because America had been attacked 20 years prior. He would tell us to come to the airport, the Americans who were there, and his own administration 30 minutes later said, no, it's not safe. The Bagram air base that he closed down had a prison on there where ISIS-K was. The suicide bomber that killed those 13 American servicemen and women came from that prison, from being opened up. He told to us that there's only a few Americans left. Now we find out, no, there's hundreds of Americans still there. That's failed. He told us that he was going to secure the border. We now that it's not more than 1.4 million people encounterments illegal coming across. He told us when the public finally was able to see the hundreds of people sitting underneath a, a highway that he was going to send them back. We found that he lied to the American in the dead of night would ship people around the country. Not one of them being tested for COVID in a time that he's asking the rest of Americans. He says in his policies as well that if you're here and you're illegally that you cannot, law enforcement could, cannot come and arrest you in certain places of a, inside America. But Americans can still be arrested in those places. He told us that Americans cannot have a pipeline that would produce a million jobs and environmentally sound to be able to move our gas and our oil in a more env environmentally friendly way down to be produced in Texas. He lied to and broke a treaty with Canada, and it also hurt Mexico, within our region, but it hurt American jobs. But he allowed Putin to produce a new pipeline inside Europe, which Putin is now using it for the exact same reason to have influence inside Europe and building troops along the Ukraine border. He, he now asked, as gasoline prices rise to a level they haven't in seven years, that he writes a letter to OPEC to produce more, but tells the producers in America they can't because he shuts them off of federal land. When parents come before the school board meetings, because with COVID, they can now see on Zoom what's being taught in their schools, and they want to know what's being taught to their children, he asked the attorney general to go and investigate the parents. Every element of his philosophy and policy has been a failure. And it's not my opinion. It's the opinion of the millions of people who just voted last Tuesday to send them a very clear message. But Nancy Pelosi and President Biden are tied together because two times he's come down to these chambers and asked people to vote for those failed policies. He has his members who work for him in the administration down here trying to influence. He has his administration, his cabinet members, calling, trying to influence Democrats to vote for it, even though they don't have a score on what it costs or what it would do to this country. So yes, I have a long opinion, but it's not just my opinion. 
And it's not just in America, it's around the world. So we're trying to change the course. We're trying to build back that America could actually have jobs in America and not put a tax code that punishes people. You know, if they are successful in this, just their global minimal tax will make it more competitive to move your business overseas. When we were able to change the tax code last time, you had no inversions. You had people moving their businesses from overseas here. I remember <clears throat> I was in a school one day and I was talking about the competitiveness of America and how it's been more, comp it's been more competitive by other countries when we were trying to do our tax code. And this one student raised his hand and he said, how did America fall behind? And I asked him if he played any sports and he said he was a swimmer. I said, well, let me give you an analogy based upon swimming. Picture America after World War II and we're at a swim meet competing with every other country. We jump in the pool, not only do we win, we dry off before second and third arrives. Well, when the next year comes, we think a lot of countries got damaged more than we did <clears throat> during World War II, so we should probably raise the taxes on America or provide greater foreign aid, put a weight belt on about five pounds, and every year we add another weight belt. To pretty soon, we got a 50-pound weight belt on. And you know what? We no longer win. And the rest of the world looks around and says, why don't you swim like you used to? What we really have to do is remove the weight belt. But the reconciliation is bigger than a 50-pound weight belt. Not only will it uh, make us not win, it will make us sink. It will enhance other countries' ability to be more competitive than America. So I have strong opinions about his policies. Yes. Leader McCarthy, if Democrats pass the bid to the Build Back Better bill, it will continue those monthly child tax credit payments through next year, but then it would expire at the end of next year. And so what would be your position then? Would you, would you want to continue it with changes or, or let it expire? You know, the, great, the great thing about in Congress is we have to make decisions about everything, not a, not a little silo point. We don't have all the money in the world. We'd have to look at it prioritize what we would spend our money best on for the future. It, it just goes to show with your question is exactly what the Wharton School was saying, that the president is not telling the truth, that this bill does, this bill does cost. It costs $4 trillion. There's a reason why they want to run the bill through without having a congressional budget office tell you how much it costs. There are gimmicks behind this. It's even why the New York Times criticizes it as well. It's really interesting. From the New York Times the Wharton School, to the millions of people have voted, you would think as though that they would wake up and but chart a new course. So yes. You let it expire then? Oh, I said it's not before us today. We're not in the majority, but that's a good hypothetical and good try. House Republicans are sponsoring a bill that would uh, limit the DOJ's ability to make these settlement payments uh, to families that have been separated at the border. Uh, does Congress have the authority to prevent the Department of Justice from uh, making these payouts? And what do you make of President Biden saying that's not going to happen? Okay, the first question is, yes, we have a bill up. Yes, I co-sponsored it. And yes, uh, Congress has the right and authority to do that. Secondly, what do I think of the president saying that's not going to happen, but then his White House walk it back the very next day and say, yes, he's supportive of it? Um, it just goes to show to the earlier question. Many times President Biden tells us one thing, that doesn't seem to be truthful with his own administration taking action for another. I, the only thing that will happen if that is the case, it will give greater incentive to more ability of people coming across here illegally. It will do a greater incentive to Americans to question what is going on in this administration. And one of my biggest fears, and I, I brought this point to you many times, and I, I think you should ask this question because they're not providing the information anymore. Why would two people on the terrorist watch list from Yemen, and you cover from California, why would they come in illegally from Mexico to California on different days? Who are they talking to? What do they have planned, and why are they here? There are other people that I'm told that have been caught, don't know, but they won't provide us the information on the terrorist watch list. More than 160 countries people come from. You just had the mishap in Afghanistan. We had more than 5,000 prisoners of some of the worst people get out. We've watched what their actions have been just in a few days where they killed 13 American men and women soldiers. My question is, if you keep a border unsecure, you're making America unsecure. Yes, ma'am.
applicants has filed another motion to adjourn just now. Is that is that going to keep going on? Republicans will use every tool in our toolbox to try to save America, to try to stop the reconciliation bill. So there'll be many things we do. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering where you are right now on the idea of this kind of central idea of that summit, which is about keeping temperature increase to one and a half degrees or less um, on the planet. Do you think that's the correct goal? And how do you think that can be achieved? If so? Well, the one thing I know, I'm not a scientist, but the one thing I know, you're never going to reach there if you don't have China and Russia there as well, and mm -hmm. you allow them to continue to produce. So... Um, I think hybrid carbon, hybrid carbons are going to be here for quite some time. You've got to have a bridge across. I think natural gas is very clean. I think what President Biden's doing about rising, raising the price in America, um, make us pay more, but still buy it from somewhere else. I think American has the ability, especially when it comes to natural gas. Is American natural gas is 42 percent cleaner than Russian natural gas. But all the actions this president is taking, I don't think, helps us environmentally. If you watched in the last decade, we lowered our CO2 emissions. And we did it at the same time becoming energy independent. Um, and what else we did was actually lower the cost in America for our consumers. There's a better way to do it through technology and through science than what they're currently doing. They're, all they're doing is causing pain to Americans and making China stronger and allowing China to pollute. Last question. With regard to the uh, with the uh, child care and the reconciliation bill, some of the some of the people say that it's an attack on religious liberty because federal funds cannot be used to, to fund for a parent to fund their their child to go to a religious school. Your reaction on that? That's wrong. It's just like inside the BIF that they won't allow um, religious entities to utilize the money as well. It, it just seems like it's an assault on religion time and again, just from removing the Hyde Amendment, something that people have been able to be a part of. Um, the administration has a lot of things wrong with them. This is one of the tops. Thank you all very much.